This video is the first one in our discussion of revenue recognition, which is chapter 18 in our textbook. The FASB did a complete overhaul of revenue recognition a couple of years ago, and it had major Im impacts on a lot of companies. Prior to this new change in revenue recognition, there were uh, hundreds of different standards depending on what the company's industry was in and what specific type of product or service it was selling. The goal of this new revenue recognition standard is to uh, standardize revenue recognition with one simple, simple, fairly simple model, much simpler than it was before, that any company, regardless of its industry or the product or service it was providing, could follow. As you can see in the middle of this slide here, the revenue recognition follows a five-step process, identifying the contract, identifying the separate performance obligations or the separate components within that contract, determining the transaction price, allocating the transaction price to those separate performance obligations or those components within the contract, and recognizing revenue when the performance obligation or the components are, are provided to the customer. There's a lot here at these five steps, uh, so I'm going to show you a little video and edit that video to help make it a little bit more understandable. Identify the contracts with the customer. Identify the performance obligations. Determine the transaction price. Allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations. Recognize revenue as each performance obligation is satisfied. All right, so hopefully that helped you understand the five steps to the revenue recognition um, standard. As we said before, step one is to identify the contract with the customer. Let's take some notes here. There are several concepts to behind this, several criteria behind this, identifying the contract. Um, you can see them here on this PowerPoint slide. You don't have to memorize all of these, and they all look pretty fairly straightforward. The one thing that I want to take away from the recognizing the contract is simply that the contract doesn't have to be a signed formal agreement. It may be a written formal agreement. It may be oral, just a company makes a phone call to another company and makes an order, or it may be implied. And what we mean by implied is if two companies are ordinarily doing business regularly with one another, maybe at the end of every month, a particular order is automatically placed, then that acts as a contract. Step two is where we identify the performance obligations. Identify the separate. Identify the separate performance obligations. And this is where we're going to spend some time talking about what this means. So first of all, what is a performance obligation? We've never used this term in Accounting 221, most likely. about We've said that revenue was recognized as the goods or services were provided. Now we're getting a little more technical here. And we're saying these performance obligations are promises to provide a product or a service. So the new standard is taking a more um, focused look at, at the contract as are could there be multiple different components? Uh, sometimes you'll see the term multiple elements within a contract. And what we try to do is uh, get to the lowest level possible. <clears throat> what are the various elements or what are the various or multiple deliverables within a contract? Okay, so a product or service is separate or sometimes we use the word distinct when two conditions and both have to be met. One, the customer can benefit. From the good or service.
on its own. Or together with readily available, easy to buy, resources. Okay, so that's one component. And uh, so let me just say that again, the customer can benefit from the good or service on its own or together with readily available resources. So what does this mean? I want you to think of razor and razor blade model. So let's assume that a company is selling razor, razors and razor blades. Now, if this is the only company, let's assume that this uh, razor is not included and the company just sells just this razor right here and there are no blades available yet. These blades are going to come out maybe in another month or so. So the company's provided, you've purchased just this razor stick. No other companies have these blades. And this company, let's assume it's Gillette, like we see here. Gillette uh, is back ordered on these blades. So you have the stick, but you do not have the blades yet. No other blades that are currently on the market will fit this. The question is, do you have, ha have you purchased anything with this stick that is of any value to you? From Gillette's perspective, have they sold a product by just this razor stick handle? Or is their product actually the razor together with the razor blade? Well, if the customer cannot benefit just from the stick, or if the customer can't benefit from the stick and no other razors are available, none of the other competitors' razors fit, then the Gillette has not, cannot record revenue until it provides the blades because we can't use this razor handle unless we have the actual blades. If the competitor's blades fit, then Gillette in that case could recognize revenue for selling just the, the blade or the, the razor stick. <clears throat> okay, so that's one component. And the second component is The goods or services are separately identifiable in the contract. Another way to say this is the two are not inter interdependent, not dependent on one another. Okay, what's an example of this? Let's say you bought uh, a certain type of computer and it was with that computer it was only functional if the certain software was loaded on it. Uh, without without the software, you can't use the computer. Without the computer, you can't use the software. Then we would say that those two are interdependent and revenue can only be recognized when both the computer and the software had been provided. All right, now let's look at a few examples. I'd like you to open up your uh, class examples on Blackboard, Chapter 18, Revenue Part 1, Examples 1, 2, and 3. I've copied them over into this PowerPoint, but you should have them next to you to refer to. Example 1, General Motors sells a car to Fairfield Auto Dealers at a price that includes six months of GPS navigation services. The navigation services are regularly sold on a standalone basis by GM for a monthly fee. After a six-month period, the customer can choose to renew the services on a fee basis with GM. Here's the question. When GM sold the car with the navigation services to Fairfield Auto Dealers, did it sell one or two products, or in other words, one product and one separate service, or simply one combined product with a service? Let's think about that for a moment. All right, so we need to identify the contract. Well, we see that there's a contract here, a purchase was made. Identify the separate performance obligations. Okay, here are the questions. Can the customer benefit from the car? Yes. Can it benefit from the navigation on its own? Well, we see here that we see here that the navigation services are so regularly sold on a standalone basis. So we know that that must be correct. Can the uh, customer benefit? from the navigation services, on, are they separately identifiable? Absolutely. So we see that there are two separate performance obligations. 
Since the navigation services are sold on a standalone basis, the car works without the navigation system, navigation services, and the navigation services can be used for other cars. We know that because they are sold separately. So what does this mean as we continue? Well, we have to, uh, we can provide the car without the navigation services. Um, let's say the navigation services weren't provided for until another year later, then we'd have to decide how much of our revenue of the sale with the navigation belongs simply strictly to the navigation and not record that revenue until that performance obligation was satisfied. We see that's not the case here. They're delivering both together, but if that were the case. Example two. Softtech Inc. licenses customer relationship software to Lopez Company. In addition to providing the software, Softtech promises to perform consulting services by extensively customizing the software. I'm going to highlight that because that extensively customizing is the key term here. It's customized to Lopez's needs for $600,000. The question is, is the sale of the software and the consulting services comprised of one interdependent performance obligation or two separate performance obligations? I want you to take a moment to think about what, how you might answer that. So because the software is customized to meet Lopez's needs, the license and the consulting services are one combined performance obligation. The customer support services is highly interrelated and interdependent with the licensed software. And therefore, these customer support services should be combined. Consider the example like this. If Softtech provides the software but has not customized it to Lopez, Lopez is likely to be unable to use that software and therefore shouldn't rec there should no, be no recognize, revenue recognized by Softtech if they were only to provide the software. All right, one more quick example. Example three, Cardo's Construction enters into a contract to design and build a hospital. Cardo's is responsible for the overall management of the project and identifies various goods and services to be provided, including engineering, site clearance, foundation, procurement, construction, piping, wiring, installation of equipment, and finishing. Does Cardo's have a single performance obligation to the customer in this revenue arrangement? So Cardos accounts for the bundle of goods and services as one single performance obligation. That's because the goods and services are highly interrelated. Um, the company has to integrate all those goods and services into the combined item, the hospital, for which the customer is contracted. In, in addition, the goods or services are significantly modified and customized to fulfill the contract. In this case, the company's objective is to transfer one combined item. That's it for this video. The next video will look at the next steps, the next step and uh, future steps of the five-step process of revenue recognition.